But, uh, it, maybe it is, and, and it turned out it was. So, um, so he's he's uh, looking for work. If anyone watches this bud, by the way. Um, so, because I know a lot of industry people do. Uh, but but anyway, he made a point, and like uh, we had a uh, esports awards thing, yeah. And uh, people got nominated for uh, you know journalist esports journalist of the year, and uh, you were left off the nominations list. I'm, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm guessing there's no way you can't. I, like, I, I'll say it on your behalf that I think you should have gone there. Uh, you obviously can't because there's no way to win this, is there? Like, you just honest. like a pissy bitch or whatever. Yeah. No, to be honest, I don't give a fuck about awards. Yeah. Um, I don't. I, I think it's okay to be happy, or I think it's okay to want to be nominated. That's totally okay. But with the way I do things, I don't give a shit about awards. Oh, I'm gonna do it. I'll, if I stay never nominated for any award for anything I do, I'm totally okay with that. You know, a lot of times something that gets mentioned to me is I, I, I'm looking to publish every report I can for the money and stuff like that. I left my engineering full-time engineering position to do this because it's fun. Because I'm around Counter-Strike, a game. I'm I, I, I'm not going to say a CSGO fan because CSGO, as we know, James Blue has fucking problems. But I'm a, I'm a true down-to-heart Counter-Strike fan. And if I get to do some sort of work, I guess you can call it, around it, that's to me what's fun. That's why I, I've taken more time, taken way less money. It, it's it's not even remotely like related to, to anything like that. For me, it's getting to not only uh, help some of these players out who don't have a voice, who won't have anyone that'll listen to them, not only help them get paid, get them what they deserve, make sure they don't get fucked over, make sure they don't get forced out of the leagues, whatever it might be. Uh, if I can help be that voice and also get to attend these events and talk to and interview these players and get their thoughts and, and I don't want to say befriend the players because there still should be some sort of, you know, professional, professional uh, borderline. Yeah, but I'm not trying to go out on my way, you know, to be their friends because I know a lot of people do try to use their positions to try to befriend players. We have, uh, we have journalists in press rooms, yes, even at the Pro League Finals in Dallas who are asking for signatures on jerseys, who are taking selfies with pro players. Uh, who are asking ridiculous questions. Uh, we still have that going on. And that, you know, I, I want to essentially, you know, show that there still should be some sort of professional guideline, but I also want to know the players to know that I'm a guy, I will help you. I'm going to report, I'm going to publish a report if you're going to make a roster move. If you're being moved from one team to another, I'm going to publish that report, but I'm also here if there is, you know, anything that I can possibly help with. And I do that just because I, I like Counter Strike. I, I, I first played it when Source came out like this. Uh, I know I'm a. a you know, everyone calls me a source noob, or anyone who likes source, source noob. I'm sure you, yeah. you, you've heard the most of it, but yeah. uh, I, I just love the game, honestly. So, uh, it's, that alone, has, uh, to me, has been worth it, just to, just to do this. I could, I could care less about the rest of the stuff. I could care less about a fucking award. Uh, I don't, you know, it doesn't bother me, honestly. It truly 100% doesn't bother me. Well, I, I, can, I can tell you, uh, it took me and it took me last year to win my award. It's up over there next to my Alan Shearer doll and a gift <laughs> from a, a fan. Um, but, uh, you know, I, well, back when the first wave of esports awards were out, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll tell you some of the shit I went through. Uh, so, I mean, for the first ever esports journalist of the year award. Um, because it was run by Turtle Entertainment, and obviously, like I was, still, I was writing about Counter Strike Source back then, and Source was, you know, the redheaded stepchild uh, to 1.6. And um, uh, the first award for journalism, uh, I was nominated for it, uh, and uh, we put on a short list, but it was a public vote. Okay. So zero presence in a game that isn't a top tier esport no chance of winning that but the article that did win i always remember it dude this would fucking blow your mind i I'm, i have to try and find it it was about 650 700 words long all right and it was called spawn the legendary 1.6 player pro gamer or pro rapper question mark. <laughs> right and i'm like okay well you know i mean this is an interesting question, a deep philosophical question. But when you read the article, it was just some journalist who, who would never, who had clearly never met Spawn, either, who didn't talk to him, right? Uh, and he'd heard that Spawn had built, like, used some of his prize winning to build like a mini recording studio in his house, and was going to try and release a single. Mm -hmm. 
No, that, that, that was the article. And, and it was he won. And it, yeah, and it was ba- yeah, and he won. He won the award. And it was basically saying, like, yeah, Spawn is amazing at 1.6. He's great. But he's also into hip hop. And he might release a single. And how cool is that? That won. That was the best <laughs> article. Right? I, 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 was, I was really uh, pretentious back then when it came to journalism, you know, I, I, I wanted to do like good work. So I was writing very long feature length articles, you know, 3,000, 5,000 words. They were probably a little bit needlessly verbose and inaccessible, um, you know, for, for people at that time. And I did this like exploration of the difference in attitudes between UK Counter-Strike players and, and European Counter-Strike players and how it had held back the scene. And I interviewed 40 players in total or something stupid. Uh, and collated their quotes and then laid it out like I was writing a dissertation, and it was uh, and it, uh, it was called attitudes or something I don't remember anyway. But uh, but that got nominated. Uh, yeah, just uh, I may as well have just shat into a fucking you know A4 and folded it and sent that in. Would have had, had just as much um, chance of winning. Then the next year. Fuck, I, what did I, I got shortlisted for an expose I did. This is when I worked at Gotfrag. Um, I, I wrote an expose about a guy who had... It was a mad story. He had set up an, a LAN in Harrow in the UK called U- Euro LAN or something. Mm-hmm. And it was the one of the first times he saw all of the top teams from Europe and UK had all come together to play each other in an event. He took all the money, all the entrance fees, and when people turned up to the land center, it, the event didn't exist. Nothing was there? No, it literally didn't exist. So one of my old friends, who doesn't uh, talk to me anymore for ideological uh, differences, a uh, good guy, or used to be a good guy, uh, called um, you know, Gomez, uh, who used to manage Zeb board with me way back when, he uh, fucking paid for the whole thing so the, the event could go ahead. But in the brouhaha that happened, it never got finished because they had a completely set of tournament areas and everything else. So the final got played like online. There was like no official winner or whatever. So the guy who did that took, came back like two years later uh, under, hey, under a up? different name. Yeah, under a different name, right? Uh, so he was called Zanubis when he fucked everyone over the first time. And then he came back with soup as the as Superfly with a one instead of an L. And uh, he set up an organization called Club AI and was just straight lying to people. And, and one of the guys who had been there, you know, Gomez and, and a guy called Funky, Mark Funky Harwood, who was like a, a good UK source player way back when, he saw a photo of him, this photo leaked. And he went, that's fucking, that's fucking Zanubis. That's the cunt who ripped everyone off. And he started this organization. And they were all, they were trying to bring legal action against him. So I wrote this expose anyway on it, and it got published over at Gotfrag. And I got shortlisted for that. But there was some weird thing where um, a, a Cadred, which I didn't work for at that time, because I was at Gotfrag. I went on to work for Cadred. They published a story on it. They didn't do the expose or the interviews or anything like that. They just did a news story, and they all accused me of plagiarism. And it's not the same thing at all. No. Uh, it's not the same work. It, it's got completely original interview material. The idea of plagiarism was ridiculous. And they were better connected to obviously Total Entertainment to me. So mysteriously, even though it was the first time uh, our you know, source department had got Frag had been nominated for anything, uh, it, it disappeared from the short list. Uh, because I was a plagiarist, and apparently internally, people were like saying, if, if Richard Lewis, gets the, if he goes through, uh, he wins this award, if you vote for him, we won't work with you ever again. Uh, so I got fucked out of that award. Everyone pretends this never happened. Oh, it, sure. it, it, yeah, everyone, Richard, you're making this up. I'm definitely not. Like, it, 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 it happened. Uh, and that's why I'm not on late. Uh, that's why I was shortlisted going in. But if you look at like later shortlists, my name isn't there. Um, wow. So, so. But I will is... say, I do want to say before you go. To thanks to Kevin for you know I do appreciate that he thinks I should have been nominated. I don't. You I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, you probably got more right to be on there than me. Honestly, I think I've broken like one or two stories this year for obvious reasons. I'm sat on a good one. I, I'm just before the voting. I think I'm going to release a good one. 
I'll there release. You go. Yeah, just just because you know what I mean. Like it's nice to it, it's nice to win. Like I'm like you. I, you know I'm I'm indifferent. Like an award doesn't mean yeah. a good deal. But I look back to all of those years where I got fucked by esports. Well, I don't know if I was being called out for being a play for for plagiarism, and if someone won for writing a bullshit article like that two separate times, I'd probably I'd probably be pretty upset as well. Yeah, I, but right I, I, now. Win this one, it will make up for the two I got fucked out of, and then I'll like recuse myself from all future awards. Like, it'll, there you go. It, yeah, it'll karmically work itself out. So, anyway, look, here's the thing I want to talk about uh, the standard, the professional standard we're held to. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty insane, um, honestly. And, uh, you know, I alluded to it a little bit right at the start of the show where I said, listen, we, we, we uh, uh, you know, uh, held to a much higher standard than sports journalists and whatever. But I, I totally want to pick your brains about this. Because imagine any other journalist living in a world where they would lose their job, livelihood, credibility, the works, for getting a story wrong. Yeah, that's my opinion. Yeah. Like so, I said earlier, sports, sports journalists, like all around, like I follow a lot of, of mainstream sports journalists, whether it be in MMA, whatever, uh, football, basketball, baseball, uh, they're wrong every week, like routinely wrong with their reports but a majority of the time they're right and and i don't just mean like wrong as in they reported something they're right and then the end result is that player doesn't go somewhere no they were like legitimately just got wrong in them and they're still considered the best journalists in that specific space whereas i don't know i i can only speak for counter-strike i don't want to say all of these words but i'm going to assume it's pretty damn similar uh you get one thing wrong you know someone like me saying that uh nrg was going to sign kiev uh, and then they ended up not going that route and going to big and then making that same lineup that I said would happen that to They were definitely the, in talks the fan base. NRG. Yes, that yeah. the fan base is, Considers that you were wrong. You're a shitty journalist. You're not a journalist. You're you're wrong Or when I say uh, Mixwell and Rush were are were literally on the borderline of joining liquid and being bought out And then also, that doesn't happen and then Hex also in a video says that they were going to and then they didn't happen People still refer back to that and say, "You got that wrong, your shit." So, it. I thankfully, I, I, I think personally, I would say I've dealt with that quite well because it doesn't bother me. I know I'm doing, you know, my job, but uh, it is mind blowing the level that we that we get held to. Uh, I don't like. I don't want to say that we shouldn't be held, but we we probably should. Like, I don't want to go out and just say, "Hey guys, you need to stop holding us to such a high standard. It's ridiculous." But it is a little bit crazy when you look at it and compare it to anything else. Any other, you know, form of journalism that has been there longer in a different space, they're nowhere near held to that level at any point. So it's, it's a little ridiculous, and and I don't know if I want to, like I said, go all the way and say that we shouldn't be held to that high of a standard. But I, I, I think I think it's a middle ground. You know, I, I yeah. think I think the standard we're held to is clearly absurd um, because no journalist is going to go a professional career and not get something uh, wrong in terms of outcome. Especially when we exist in a space where, again, it comes back to this word, vindictive. I've written stories, and because I've written the story, the organization has tried to deliberately sabotage their own move. Isn't that what they did, Jacob? Didn't they try to? I mean, yeah, they, they went down that route, yeah, for sure. Like, they considered uh, not making the move just so that he would yeah. be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like which that? is insane, isn't it? I mean, think think about the a That's mind like movie-level villainous right there. Yeah. It's so fucked up, and and it's it's happened to me where like people are like, uh, oh, you know, oh maybe maybe we won't do it now, you know you've ruined it, you know you, you've ruined the announcement, so maybe we just won't go ahead. And I'm like, well look, if you want to fuck over your own business to get one over on me, um, and people have even argued with me about it, you know, because I've I've had drinks with a lot of these owners who shit talk me online. You know, again, I'm not shy. I'll I'll come and talk to you. Um, you know, they've said actually it would behoove them business-wise to, to chip away at my reputation uh, because then the next time I'm writing about their shit, you know, and Team Liquid have done this. I mean, again, I, I, I'll, I'll talk about that. Steve Arn said is, is, is a real character, dude, because I want to like the guy. I really do. But it's incredibly hard when your organization is dedicated to fucking saying I lie. He, he's done it to me like four or five times. And I think on the third time Liquid denied a story that came true, uh, I met him, it was in Atlanta, I think, and I, and, I, and I went up and I said, listen, me and you, let's get a drink. And I bought him like a super nice fucking expensive whiskey, 
so here we go let's sit down let's fucking talk this out my dollar uh you know can, can, can we work this out because you don't have to fucking say i'm a liar online you can enter a no comment you know we can work together ask jack it's possible that's what they give so, me now look what gives me no comment every time <laughs> well um, good at least they've learned that lesson but then like we got back uh from that meeting and like you know we shook hands hugged it out and i thought you know that's good actually even though he's been a cunt to me right i'd, I'd rather have the relationship mended soon as i got back into the story and he fucking came out and did the exact same thing like what do you do with someone like that that's like pathological what are after we, a what nice are we... whiskey too fucking in a good conversation I in think. the four fucking seasons in fact i was nearly crying when the bill came in <laughs> i tried to be i tried to be all fucking baller and like yeah get him the get him the best whiskey you got in the house it's the four seasons they got some pretty good ones <laughs> mad expensive it was like fucking like it was probably like a 400 dollars shot or something like fucking gods piece of shit mother there you go, there you go, Steve. And uh, he was like, oh, you know, thanks, thanks. And I thought we'd hit a fucking, you know, common ground, right? But nah, he fucked that guy, seriously. I mean, you know, he, he knows what he does, because this is the other thing. Journalists don't have followings generally, right? Yeah. Pretty much. You know, That's what you like, told me. When I when we had that original conversation, uh, I, I should just get out of the way, because I've been meaning to say it, is you told me, if you want money, you want any kind of following or fame, you want any of that? You want notoriety? You want you want to be considered like a fantastic person by the entire community? Don't don't do this. Don't be a journalist. When I ask you those questions, what should I expect? What would you do differently, or what would you suggest now that you have made it this far? If I decide to go this route, and you said if you want all those things, just stop right now. Don't even do it because you're not gonna get that. And and I think it's extremely accurate. Yeah, Steve, it's go ahead. It's, it's true. No, no, I'm just saying. I, 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 I want you to talk. I, I feel like I've been ranting and talking. Over. It's just well, we, we can frame this as a, it's a podcast, right? So it, I, yeah. I mean, it's not an interview. Uh, but obviously, I'm passionate about this more than anything else, you know. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it's it's weird. It's like I think about all the good work I've done in the in the community, and uh, and and not just the stuff people know about. Not just breaking stories that, that are important. Uh, you, you know, I think people understand, say, for even something like I buy power, there's a sensitivity that I have to it because it's not like I enjoy wrecking lives or anything. No. Yet, the perception is I'm a garbage human being. Uh, and, and, and that perception stems from uh, the fact that I just won't take shit from anybody. Like, it drives people mad. Uh, they don't like that I'll just say what the fuck I want. I, I don't give a fuck about any consequences, by the way. Because, I, you know, let's say a mob stirs up and I get fired. I walk into another job, uh, paid the same or more tomorrow. So yeah. you you mildly inconvenience me. Um, you, you're not, you know, I've got plenty to occupy myself with. You know, it's not like it, it, it just wouldn't be. They cheer like it was like wouldn't. That's, if that's the worst thing that could happen to me, I, I, I'm all right, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just think it upsets people. So that's why you have these ridiculous phases where it's like, you know, there'll be a thread, God bless Richard Lewis. And then three months later, fuck Richard Lewis. I hope he dies. And it'll be like over like the... They the do that with so many things. Whether it's a caster or a player or whatever it is, it's every other week. It's, oh, we love this or, or fuck them. Yeah. And... and you, you, you see it, like, you know, take, for example, this Jason R thing that happened recently. So yeah. Jason R, right, specifically calls me out, says I made up my most recent article. Didn't, of course. Uh, says there's no proof in the article. I mean, what do you want? Like, I, I, I gotta protect the source, and I can't reveal which sites we looked at, but, you know, I've shown you the back end and how it works. So I guess the assumption is I fake those screenshots. Yeah. Uh, because if the article's fake and there's no proof within it, those screenshots then by extension must be fake. Um, now, certainly, anyone who's seen me try and stream by myself when Sam isn't around knows uh, I'm not a technical guy. I mean, you know, like, the idea of me being a Photoshop fucking wizard is hilarious. Uh, I can barely use fucking MS Paint. Um, but anyway, uh, so he says that. So what I did was, because he talked at one point in, in, in you know, in, the, in uh, his stream about how it's like a jealousy thing. People don't want streamers and personalities to earn money. Oh, it's a huge thing. 